There is a Chinese saying, 一日不做事, 一日不吃飯. It's the same for your writing. If you treat yourself like an athlete or a scientist, an athlete of science, you need to define consistent effort every day. If you are not writing every day, this video is for you. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during a PhD. One of the most stressful points about working in a PhD is not being able to write your thesis fast enough and not feeling on top of everything beside all the background noise like lab work, administrative work, student visa. So today I want to focus on writing because it is really important to your mental health that you are writing and feeling on top of everything. There are still a lot of you still ask, how can I write faster? How can I write more? So it occurs to me that if you are still asking this question, that means I haven't done a good enough job as a teacher. That's okay. Let's give me another chance. I'm here to make sure to keep you accountable so that you can feel a little less stressed in your PhD and have better mental health. By the end of it, you will feel happier, less stressed and more productive. Are you on board? I want to break this down into five simple steps, but I want to refer to each of these explanations from my past longer video because Vera cannot stop talking. I like to explain everything in greater depth. So I hope this video is a great start for you, getting a framework of how to write consistently and productively so you can be a faster writer and more effective at writing your thesis. Let's get started. First of all, you have to define redefine what is writing. A lot of students are beating themselves up too much because they are not putting word on this gigantic word document that they are trying to prepare. That can be a thesis, that can be a research article. Let's take a step back for Vera's definition and you can quote me on this. Writing is whatever it takes for you to finish your thesis. Whatever it takes for you to finish your paper. That could mean writing your figure legend. That could mean spending a little bit more time changing all your PowerPoint figure into Inkscape figure, which will in the future save you a ton of time because the processing speed is a lot faster and you are leaving more room for your creativity. It could be writing a list of items to be done for your writing. That is the definition of writing to me. Even reading and researching the right list of paper to be included in your thesis. That's part of writing because you can't progress without this work. It could be looking up the definition of some jargon that is in the paper that you are reading. If you can't understand the jargon, you can proceed to write about it. So Googling that and even reading that on Wikipedia is part of your writing. Now, are we on the same page? With that, I hope you treat your writing like you are an athlete. If you were a swimming athlete, every day 5 a.m. Michael Phelps dive into that cold water and practice swimming. Every swimmer for Olympic Games, they do it consistently every day. No matter it's early, it is a little cold that morning, they show up. What I'm asking you is, I don't care how much you write by the end of your writing session. I want you to show up for yourself. That means treating writing like it is an exercise, like it's your morning exercise every day. When you are waking up in the morning, most people consider the morning time as the creative section. So don't let anything else distract you. You don't need breakfast, you don't eat coffee, you don't need anything else, or maybe you need coffee, but like you don't need to do anything else besides focusing on what you needed to get written for 30 minutes. If you ask any successful professor, most of them will share the same tips. So when I started my first daily writing, I can only write continuously for 30 minutes, but it is like going to the gym. You can pick up the 300 pounds and you squat it without breaking a bone. So you need to start with a 20 pound, 40 pound, and you can slowly build your muscle like that. And if you are a student and you're starting to practice this habit, it will 
grow and you will come a long way. And I'm assuming you are starting with your PhD. You need to start with an achievable goal of 30 minute writing daily. The 30 minute is magical because you can wait for 30 minutes before you get a coffee, before you go to the restroom. You can say no to distraction before you look at the phone. Everyone can hold for 30 minutes. There is a Chinese saying, yet yet but josie, yet yet but have fun. It's the same for your writing. If you treat yourself like an athlete or a scientist, an athlete of science, you need to define consistent effort every day. If you're not writing that day, you're not having your breakfast. That was what I've told myself. But don't finish your day without writing a 30 minute section. Fast forward three years later, when I started 30 minute writing, now I can sit at the computer and get one and a half hour session done without distraction. So if you want to know all this detail, I have already made videos about how to build a laundry list of writing, how to track time during your writing section. But the idea is show up consistently, make this your religion. Now when you are writing, you want to make sure you have an accountability partner. It could be your advisor. It could be other students in the PhD program writing as a group. One of the way is to communicate openly what you will do, even the laundry list. I know it's easy to feel embarrassed that, oh, you're just building figure today. But you know what? After a week later, you got some really cool figure and that's important part of your paper, right? So make sure you tell people openly so that it becomes an accountability for you. I have already spoken about how to manage file system, but I didn't emphasize enough the importance of version control. When you're building a Word document, it's hard to overcome the block of changing a document drastically. So one trick I have for you is to make sure to save the old version on a date. You can edit it drastically, knowing that you can always go back to that Word document later. So that free your mind up and you can suddenly become more creative and decisive and get things trimmed out. So to sum up, the five tip is define what's writing. Don't overestimate what's writing. Redefine it so that it's manageable, bite-sized. Track your time when you're writing. Be consistent with your effort. Show up every day. Consistency is more important than the volume of writing you can do in one go. I'd rather it become sustainable. Have an accountability partner who is aware of how much you're writing and how much time you're trying to write every day and celebrate the success together. The last point is to do version control so that when you need to be creative and trim out the fat of your writing, you have a version back up so that you're only moving forward in a linear fashion. So I hope these five simple tips are helpful. I already have all these detailed videos, but I really wanted to repeat myself because a good leader always repeat herself. If you don't get it, I will still repeat it in another video. Please comment below. Do you have already habit of all these five tips? And are you going to implement any one of my tips this week? Please comment below and I'm on all the social media platform that you can share with me your progress and I hope I can be your accountability partner as well if you don't have one. Thank you for watching and I will see you the next time.